worship. This is the 16th verse that is chanted during the worship to God. And what is that 16th worship? Is lighting camphor. <laughs> now, can you imagine how much of spirituality is embedded in the 16 forms of worship? You start with the worship and 16th worship is lighting the camphor. And what are you chanting? Vedahametam purusham mahantam arityavarnantam asastupare sarvani rupani vichityadhiraha. All this time you have all different gods and they are all sitting in your dark altar. If they are very lucky they will get a room. If not you will put them in a little closet and close the closet door also. So that they are all in darkness most of the time our gods. Yeah? We don't want to place them anywhere else. Oh, we want to hide them someplace. For our bedroom, we want a lot of light. For gods, put them in a closet and then shut the doors most of the time. Huh? All this time I am in darkness, light camp for, oh, all of a sudden I am seeing all the gods. <laughs> <laughs> and now I am seeing all this multiplicity of the gods. But guess what? Once I lit the fire, I said, oh my God, they are all the same light. But when I am worshipping so much, there is a joke in a, in a movie actually. The fellow is lighting so much camphor that all the pictures of the gods have this black suit on them. <laughs> so he'll be chanting, Vakkartunda Mahakaya, Surya Kuvad Samaprabha. And the husband is telling, sorry Amma, that's not Ganapati. That is the tail, not the trunk. So please chant Hanuman Shlokam. So, so much of suit is formed on the god, we don't even want to clean them. Huh? And that's how we are doing the worship. But the real worship is to invoke the light within us. And that 16th chant that we do is lighting the camphor. And why do we light the camphor when we chant that mantra? Huh? Now you can't even light camphor even in the temples because of fire restriction. Smoke alarms will go off. And you can't even uh, light camphor. Very bad. Huh? You can't even do flame arti to Swami. It is restricted. Yeah? So you are suffering from that kind of happiness also. The point of lighting a camphor, now they are also selling smokeless camphors, you know. Somebody figures out how to market these kind of things also. They invent smokeless camphor. The reason why you light camphor is, camphor is the one that goes from solid to straight to gaseous state without going through the liquid state. So what we are trying to, that is, a, that is an indication to say that straight from human to divine. You are going. That is the significance of lighting a camphor. Now, coming back to this uh, beautiful sloka in the context of what we are talking as emerging, great, grand and holy is invoking this light within us. Vedahametam purusham mahantam. Not ordinary being, supreme being. I have known that. What is that supreme being? Aditya-varnam. God is nothing but light. What we give as form to the God is actually ignorance. Okay? Even that ignorance we have to go beyond that. God is not a form. God is... We want to worship God as a form only because He has taken that form to answer the prayers of the greatest devotees. But if you get stuck in that form, that is avidya. You got to go beyond the form. So what is this beyond the form? That being what in the context of Christianity, to think that Jesus is that body with nice long hair and a very nice beautiful white robe and everything walking around you, that is avidya, that's ignorance. That's what Jesus wants to say. That come on, I am not this body. Sacrificing that body on the cross doesn't mean anything to me, isn't it? Uh, who am I? I am that in incredible resurrection. The I am consciousness, Jesus the Christ. I am is the Jesus the Christ. Not that body is that the Jesus the Christ. Same thing Buddha said. In fact, there is not one Buddha. There are millions of the Buddhas that are realized. So actually last weekend when we were at, uh, uh, when I was at Vancouver, it was Buddha Purnima. And I had no what, didn't know what to talk about. Swami comes in the dream and he says four words. Buddha. Buddha, Buddhi, Buddha. <laughs> okay? Buddha means? Ignorant one. Ignorant one. Yeah. Buddha means? Old. Old. We are born as Buddhas, become Buddhas and die. <laughs> <coughs> That's what animals do. Buddhas become Buddhas and they die. But some people want to use what is called the I, the intelligence. <laughs> 
So when the buddhu becomes buddhi, then the one who is actually living with discrimination. But only a few with buddhi become buddha. So the I has become A. I has become A. So, hello. Not realized in that. I has become A. So what is the difference between buddhi and buddha? Difference is I and A. So Swami, I was asking Swami, so what does it mean Swami? What does it mean? Swami was saying, I is individual discrimination. A is fundamental atmic discrimination. So the one who uses discrimination for his own living, huh? that is buddhi, using intelligence at least. But Buddha is not that. He is going to fundamental level of discrimination. That fundamental level of discrimination is, this is not the body, this is not the mind, and who is the indweller, the light that is present in every single individual, Om Mani Padme Hum. And that's what Buddha realized. Enlightenment is light, isn't it? Light and enlighten. So, enlightenment, light is what Buddha saw. Light is what Jesus showed. Light is what Zarathustra said. Light is what the, the light you see in the dark of the night is that of God in man. Follow that light that's in your heart and reach the promised land. So says Baba, Satya Sai Baba, Satya Sai Baba, my Lord. So this light, what they are talking about, what is this light? Vedaham etam purusham mahantam um aditya varnantam asastu pare sarvani rupani vijitya dhiraka namani kritva abhivadan yadaste. I'll pause there because I'm already five minutes late for SSC. So close with Om and three shantis and unfortunately, this is the guest lecture for this month. The rest of them, the next one is going to be July first week, hopefully with Swami's grace. So, we'll, uh, but you all are going to continue to see the light and turn the light on by 8.45 and come and chant and contemplate. I will keep sending the material to Chandar and uh, we'll please, Anand, come every week at nine o'clock, not only when Shekhar uncle is here, okay? Young guys, come on. Bring your children, huh? let them not have any other life, okay? No, I'm just kidding. Bring them to the Sai Center. Let them listen to all of this stuff. I mean, little fellow, where is that fellow, Anand? He was chanting without knowing any mantras. He's at least following the tune of the mantras. So, what happens is they get tuned. We, are, we don't want them to get tuned, we are scared. If they get too much tuned, then we'll be in trouble. So, don't let my children get tuned. That's not the point. Come every weekend at 9 o'clock, every Sunday, chant and invoke the light. Okay? Chai Om Shanti. Om Shanti.